Hello, this is Bruce. I'm going to give you a short demonstration of the new Dell Hybrid client. While I'm doing this demonstration, I'm going to give you a very brief overview introduction to understand what the Hybrid client is. Then I'm going to show you how to sign up for the Wise Management Suite Pro. And then I'm going to walk you through three different use cases, uh, scenarios of the DHC. So understanding DHC, it's really about a device and kind of bringing the best to best together of three different use case scenarios. Traditionally, you might use a PC for local applications, a, a thin client for VDI applications, and some device like a Chromebook, perhaps uh, for cloud-based applications. The hybrid client really brings all three of these technologies into a single device. You can see the hybrid client will automatically tie into Azure AD, and we'll show that today. It has aggregated storage. We'll see where we can use the local file storage to share, to search and find data that might be on a local thumb drive, a local device itself, or somewhere out in the cloud. Uh, we'll sign into the device, and uh, a lot of the time I'll be showing you how the centralized management uh, uh, works using Wise Management Suite Pro. Uh, one of the components of today's demo, it, it is critical to understand infrastructure that I'm using and it might be different than what you're using. Uh, I am going to join the device to a local on-premise domain. Uh, I also do have an on-premise uh, VMware view server. Uh, I do have a cloud VDI server that I'm going to connect to as well. And then I have an Azure Active Directory. What I do not have in place is the Azure AD connector. So you'll see me log into my local domain and then log in a second time with my um, Azure credentials. Um, so just understand that when I get to that portion of the demo. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and sign up for a trial of uh, WMS Pro. You can use this link, or if you don't want to type that whole link, you can go on to wisemanagementsuite.com. One of the choices here will be Dell Hybrid Client. You can click on Learn More, scroll to the bottom, and then Start Free Trial. Within here, you can sign up for a 45-day trial. Just fill out your contact information here. Uh, when you enter the email address, make sure you remember that. Um, this email address is what you're going to use to sign on to the Management Suite console and the password that you specify here. So uh, once you're done, you'd be able to sign into the console, into the US Data Center we're going to use in this case, using that password and username that we created. Once you sign in, if you look in Portal Administration, you can actually go and look at your subscription, and you can see here that I've got um, registered for the hybrid client. I've got 10 manageable devices. So I point this out. This is different than a thin client, WMS Suite Pro license, or even a software thin client. So if you use those technologies now to manage your thin clients, uh, you would need to contact your Dell sales rep to get a DHC license added to your WMS Suite Pro tenant. Uh, let's go ahead and get right into the demo. So uh, first thing that we're going to do is within the Wise Management Suite console, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus here, and I'm going to add a policy for DHC demo. And I'm going to create a group token here. That's that DHC-demo pound one and save that. And then I'll go ahead and edit the policy for hybrid client. And the components that I'm going to add here, again, I am keeping it fairly simple is um, you can see here, I am going to make sure that I enable the guest account and I'm going to disable access to USB storage devices. Uh, I've got an address for a Citrix storefront site um, um, that's hosted by one of my colleagues. And then um, I've got a couple of VMware view connections. This one's to the VMware test drive site in the cloud. And then a um, view connection server that's running on-premise in my lab here. And we'll connect to both of these throughout the demo. Um, and then I also have um, application security. I have LibreOffice. I have that turned off. So remember, for the first demo, I have the access to the local office turned off, and I also have thumb drive access turned off. So uh, let's go ahead and get over to the, the hybrid client. So when the client comes up um, here, uh, it asked me for a username, so you can go ahead and log in with guest and no password and click on next. Once you're inside of here, if you click up in the top right, you'll see the Dell client agent. 
and it's going to be trying to register right now. I don't have that pre-configured, so I'm going to just cancel here. And I'm going to type in my WMS server name and the group token. Now remember, this group token should look familiar. This is for the token that we just uh, created that group for. If you look back at that, you can see here the uh, US1. That's the cloud-based version. That would be the same. If you had on-prem version of WMS, you would put your server in there. And then here is that group key that's inside of there. Again, I'm manually giving this for the demonstration. You could easily set these up using DNS entries or DHCP option tags. If you did that, the device would just, as soon as you turn it on, it would automatically get this information and go right into the WISE Management Suite group. Um, so I'll go ahead and register that. Um, it'll say registering for a few seconds. And once it's registered successful, it'll say it's got updates pending and you can go ahead and click on update now. When you move back to the WISE Management Suite console, you can see in here, uh, I've got one device enrollment pending. That's a default security feature that's on. So you do have to validate the enrollment. You can turn that off in the portal administration. But since it's on, I can go ahead and click on the enrollment pending, select the device, and then validate enrollment. And I'll send the command to the device. The device will then check in. You can see that it's green here and it's green that it's in compliance. Uh, my device has rebooted. Uh, so it reboots and comes back up here. And now once again, I'll go ahead and log in as guest. Um, so I went ahead and I remember I had a workspace app server address. It's going to ask me to log in here. I'm going to cancel that. Um, it also created my horizon view connections over here. So let's go ahead and connect up to the one in the test drive. So here's my credentials here. I'll go ahead and log into the test drive and then launch a Windows 10 desktop. You go ahead and close that, uh, quit and disconnect. I also just want to point out in this, in this simple use case scenario where I've got my local VDI, I may also want to connect to um, a local browser. You can see here I've got a full local Firefox and Chrome browser they have accessible to me. If I look at the activities menu, uh, I can see there are several other local applications that are available by default. One of them, uh, LibreOffice, you notice I did disable that. So when I click on that, um, that will not be available and I won't be able to launch that. So let me go ahead and log out of my device and log out here and log off. Um, and let's go back to the Management Suite console. So now we've got this DHC demo group. We're gonna create a trial child group, which will get policies that are below that. So if we click on the plus here, um, I'm creating a new group, DHC group one, and save that. And for my edit my policy for my hybrid client. So now this time, everything that we created in the DHC demo will be inherited down. And then I've got some settings that I'm adding in the group. So the first thing I'm adding, I'm adding a browser. So it just goes out to YouTube and it uses Chrome. Um, I've set up the time zone, so um, Eastern time. 12 hour time format, and then I've set up a time server. As far as personalization, um, you can see that now I've actually set a Dell neon green, uh, neon sign that's green, uh, and that's going to be an image there. It's going to be stretched. Um, I've changed the um, icon uh, size, and I've made sure that the, the docking position is a left. I've also added the browser and BDI to my favorites, um, set up some um, device customization information. So I've got some information on the device. This part is, is very important. Um, I've actually selected to join it to the domain. So I'm going to say join, join to the domain. Um, I've got an IT admin password and I'm going to previously uh, remember the user um, that logged in. So if a logged in user, um, they can just click on their name and enter their password and log in again. Um, you can see here the guest account is disabled, and I've went ahead and enabled the thumb drive. Um, and these are all settings that I put in the DHC underscore group one. I've got a couple things that have filtered down. So remember, these were in the group above it. So my Citrix connection and my Horizon View, both the local and on-prem one, or the local and the uh, test drive one in the cloud, uh, inherited from the group above it. My file of uh, affiliation. I've set that up so it's going to go cloud first, then VDI and local. Um, and then I, for my Azure integration, um, I've set up an Azure um, 
connector site. I'm not going to try to um, go through all the settings here, but you have to go out to your portal Azure. And if you're a, an Azure admin, this probably looks familiar to you. Um, but you've got a group's IDs, um, a certificate or a security client secret that's being asked for. Um, and that information goes right inside here in the WMS console. Um, so go, I'm going to go ahead and go over to the device view in the console select the device I'm working with, go over into more actions and then change the group and put the device in the group uh, with all the settings that are just applied. So the device now again will reboot as it's been changed groups and now it's ready to log in. When, if it's joined the domain successfully, you'll notice right here it's saying that um, login example and it's reminding you that you want to log in as username at domain. So mine is test.net. If I try to type in guest and sign in, you'll notice that I get invalid credentials because I've, I've disabled that guest account. So let's go ahead and cancel out. And I'm going to go in with user1 at test.net and sign in, and that works fine. Um, again, I'm not going to go into the workspace um, today. So this is where that Azure AD connector, um, it's trying to do the authentication, so I don't have that connector. So I'm going to go ahead and just put my Azure AD credentials right inside of here and enter my password. I don't care about um, syncing that. And I will save them. Click on yes here. And if I get this message, my authentication is successful. So I've authenticated to my Azure Active Directory. Uh, if I click on my uh, file storage, you can see here now the um, external files are available. Uh, they weren't available before. Um, if I click on Azure, I can see my Azure based uh, files. So those are coming here. So I've got local or uh, local storage up here, sorry. And well, and then this is local thumb drive um, and then Azure based files, all kind of searchable um, through this structure here. Um, and let's go ahead. If I click on the YouTube link that was created, um, I can see here it's done up the, the regular page. If I go ahead and sign in, I'm going to go in because I've got my own YouTube channel um, and I want to sign in and just have my history of my favorite videos. So I'll go ahead and sign in, put in my password, and you can see now I'm logged in. Um, and I can see some videos here. If I pop a new tab, I can go out. If I want to get my Microsoft uh, based email, I can sign in there. My credentials there. Um, it asked me to authenticate with my phone, so I did that and I typed in the token and signed in. So here's my email. If I go ahead and sign out as user one, I go ahead and log off. And this is the part I want to show you, pointing out that uh, user one, I did say to save the user, so I don't have to do the user one at test.net. Just click on user, enter my password. And it, authentication was automatically successful. I don't have to type that in anymore. When I open my browser, my YouTube, it actually remembers me. So I don't have to log in. I got my favorites there. I click over here and go to outlook.com and my email is here. So it's actually keeping those uh, user one credentials is keeping the um, information specific to this user um, available. If I go ahead and click on presentations, I can get an O365 application. And you can see here is my um, presentations that are available too and, and everything that's available on my storage there. If I click on uh, LibreOffice, uh, again, I made that available in this policy. You can see that's here. So let me go ahead and log out of user one, go ahead and restart the device and we'll move back to my Wise Management Suite console. So for the, the last demo, instead of doing another um, device policy, I'm going to do it per user. So if I look at my end users, I can go ahead and add a user. And I'm going to add a user two. Remember, I was using user one before. Um, and then if I click on the user, I can actually edit policies now for this specific user. So for the hybrid client, uh, I'm going to do the pointer size. I'm going to make it big. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add an additional browser shortcut uh, for a Zoom meeting. Um, I'm changing the desktop. Remember I had the neon sign that was Dell green. Um, I've got a Redwood Forest that you'll probably recognize um, uh, when you see the background there. The wallpaper is stretched. The, 
the dock position is now at the bottom of the screen. So I had the device setting the customization on the left, it'll be on the bottom. My file affiliation is the same server. The only thing I am changing is now uh, my first priority is local. So if I try to launch an application that has access to, that'll launch with a local application, it'll do that first. And I'll show you that working. Um, and I went ahead and mounted um, Office in the VLC player and did a network drive share as well. So let's go back to the device. So it's sitting there. Um, it still remembers user one, but I'm going to go ahead and say my user is not listed. And I'll go user two at test.nut and sign in. And first thing here, um, go ahead and cancel the workspace. And uh, I do have to do my Azure credentials. Sign in there. And that was authenticated successful. And now here's the, the Redwood Forest. So I've got a different background. My taskbar is at the bottom. If I click on, um, you can see inside of here, I've got that external drive. I've got a, a MP4 video that'll play uh, with the local VNC player. Let me go ahead and close that. If I do my Chrome, uh, again, so you can see it's back to the um, generic uh, YouTube page that I had there. I went ahead and clicked down here, though this time I'm going to go to my uh, on-premise Horizon View server, and I'll enter the credentials for that. And you can see here's a VDI desktop. So let me go ahead and put that in a windowed mode. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch back that. Uh, and so here's the MP4 video that I got here. Minimize that. Let's open up the PowerPoint. So you can see right here, uh, I've got the best of both worlds, or all worlds, the hybrid client. Um, I'm running a VDI desktop over here in a window that I could do full screen. I've got a local application. This is a video running on the VLC player. I've got an O365 application and a YouTube video uh, on the one device. So that's kind of the idea. Um, the, the best of really all these devices in one with a Dell hybrid client. I hope that makes sense to you. Go, let me go ahead and just go ahead and shut down the device. Um, Thank you. I hope you found this useful. Have a great day.